Hello, you guys. Welcome back to another episode of Gals on the Go podcast. I'm Danielle. I'm Brooke, and this episode is going to be very different than our normal episodes, you guys, or I guess every episode previous to this one. Um, this week for us, I'm like, I'm sure like many of you guys, it's been a wake up call. Um, it has been mm-hmm. a week all over social media um, following the tragic murdering of George Floyd. Um, we, and Danielle and I wanted to do our best to speak out about this issue in the best way that we could. Um, so this mm-hmm. is a really special episode because we do have our friend Chloe Coriulon on this episode. Um, Chloe is going to talk about her experience as a woman of color. We were going to talk about things like microaggressions, um, you know, what white people can do to help, um, how we can be allies, answer questions. And it is going to be a conversation that we, um, it's long overdue, obviously. I I mean, I know Danielle and I, we're embarrassed, mm-hmm. truly. Like, it sh- this should have yeah. been done years and years ago. And we're really, really, really thankful that Chloe was willing to come on our show and talk about this. We did not want to sit down and just talk, Brooke and I. We felt that it wasn't right. We felt mm-hmm. that there is a lot of room to grow. Um, something I've definitely learned is I am not a racist, but I do need to understand better. There is so much. And the biggest thing that Chloe will end up talking about in the you know, in this episode is it's just about having a conversation and about having an uncomfortable conversation. And that's something Brooke and I wanted to do. And so we really hope that you guys listen to this episode and really take into account everything that is said. It, it could really open your eyes um, because it's important to have uncom- uncomfortable conversations in order to have a positive change. And at the end of the day, that is what we're working towards. And that's what Brooke and I want to do just by one little step of doing this. And I mean, this is only one episode. This is nothing you know, insane. This is only an hour, but we want to do our best. And this is where we're starting. Yeah. We're, we're just scratching the surface, you guys. And we do want this to be a part of the Gals and the Go brand. We, we see you guys. We obviously see our community mm-hmm. and we are not just white girls. Like we see, you know, all of our beautiful races and the diversity that our community has. And it's about time that, you know, we reflect those voices and we are going to, we vow to make it our mission to improve yes. moving forward um because obviously we are white and we are privileged we all make mistakes and guess what that's what we're going to be talking yeah. about in this episode today and we're so excited like we want to talk about everything that is going on the world we want to talk about how we can be allies we don't want to silence anyone we want to hear what everyone has to say and we want to be you know we want to be more understanding and it's okay to take ownership and it's okay to know it's okay to like say something wrong it's okay chloe said that in the episode a lot yeah it was a lot of that of like recognizing if you said something wrong and being like you know what i messed up and i'm gonna i'm gonna try to improve from here and i think danielle and i are both doing that we're doing that every day we talk about that all the time but really taking ownership of our issues and we realize that we are not we haven't done the best job in the past in in terms of these issues i can I know that in the past, there are things that have been said that might have been taken the wrong way. And I'm here to tell you that I am here to learn. And I want to continue to learn and continue to better my understanding of all of this. And I'm here to say that from now on, Brooke and I both are vowing to work as hard as we can to, you know, spread this message to learn more for ourselves and include more diversity, more just information about how you can be an ally in our show on our platforms. Yeah. And we don't want it to be a shameful thing either. I think we've gotten, you know, a lot of messages from girls that like, I really want to help, but I'm just being, you know, torn down or whatever. And we want this to be an educational resource for you. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Yes. So we are truly getting into it today. Um, and we we don't know everything obviously and we feel for the black community but because danielle and i are white and we have privilege we we truly we don't know what you are feeling and we will never feel that but uh, you know we are here we are allies we support you and i think the biggest thing here is like this isn't politics this is just basic human rights and we wanted to go a little bit deeper we do talk in the episode about white privilege and what it means and why white people should not feel like they're being called out You know, when people say white privilege, I think in the past it's been associated with that and you feel like attacked for, you know, being called white with privilege. We wanted to talk a little more about that. Basically, we have the privilege to do things and not worry about them. It's unseen. It's unconscious advantages that we have. And as white women, we do have them. And it's important to first obviously recognize that. Um, And there's some things that we think you guys can do. Um, to recognize your white privilege and things that we're going to start actively doing. 
Um, and I think the first thing is just to not take it personally. Do not use feeling awkward as an excuse to not engage because honestly, that's something I did for the longest time. I Same. felt so uncomfortable. Brooke too. We felt so uncomfortable talking about it. That's why we kind of unfortunately strayed away from it in past episodes because we wanted to be happy, sunshine, rainbows. Like it's all good. But guess what? We're learning that that's just not it anymore. That's just that that is not okay. And it's embarrassing that we are just now deciding to do all this but don't take it personally if you when people say you have white privilege it is not like that at all and you cannot use feeling awkward as an excuse like you should be engaging Mm -hmm. completely agree um i know we both shared i think this quote by desmond tutu on our um instagrams that if you're neutral in situations of injustice you have just chosen the side of the oppressor um that's it but simply stated you know so it's so well said um, also because of our white privilege i know that we don't have to worry about things chloe talks in her episode about things that she's had happen to her and her family because of the color of her skin it it is sick you guys it is just not acceptable but because we are white we have the privilege to know the police will probably be on our side you know if we get pulled over it's probably going to be fine and that when we're sitting in history class we're probably going to learn about white people because you know everything is all about white people and we don't have to worry about people following us and that is just the unconscious like white bias that we've been living with in our our entire life and i'm like danielle said we're embarrassed to realize that it's taken us this long to wake up and be like okay it's time to do something with that privilege yes and uh another thing that you can do to kind of recognize your white privilege and use it you know to help is you have to learn when to listen to someone when you should be promoting someone and when to speak up for what you believe in personally because there's times like in this episode you'll see we really just wanted to hear chloe talk we really wanted to listen there's a lot that we have to learn so it's important to listen and then once you have a better understanding then you can promote what others are saying and what by promote i mean you know okay yeah you can repost these stories of these cute graphics but you have to know why you're doing that and you should have a reason behind it. And then also if you're sitting with your friends, Chloe talks a lot more about this, but when you're sitting with your friends, learn when it's okay. And when you should be speaking out to like help others. So there's definitely three different times. The biggest thing I think is to listen first and then you can go from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And doing more than just the stories and realizing that if you're posting a story, are you posting it just because you feel like you should or just because, or because you genuinely believe the message there and you're you know yeah. doing the right thing. And I think that's, I've taken a, a point from that too. I know Danielle and I were trying to educate ourselves. I'm like a third of the way through white fragility. And I know it's a white author that wrote this book, but it's all about white privilege. And I, I talked to my parents about it. I was like, I'm so I can't believe I'm just now like doing my research on this stuff. Mm -hmm. Like it is embarrassing. It is. um, I saw our friend Arlen Moore is doing like a bunch of like tweets and stuff just about how he is a 23 year old white male and he is embarrassed about it. And I feel that as well. And I know that I should have done this sooner. And I know that I should be, you know, taking um, responsibility for my actions. And we have a voice and we want to use it as allies because we are allies, but we have been silent and that is unacceptable. Yeah. And something that you can start doing, like I know, with everything going on in the world right now, we're all kind of at home and, you know, it's harder to just go out there. And like some people don't feel comfortable going to protests and marches because of the virus. Talk to your family about it. This morning, my family and I, I said this in the podcast too already, but we were sitting down drinking coffee and we were talking about it. We were just having an open conversation and that doesn't always happen. So even just start talking. If the news is on, point that out, you know, it's, it's just good to start the conversation because then it starts to get in people's heads or not in people's heads, but like people are reminded of it. So then as they're living their daily life, they can kind of go back to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I will just ask you guys, you know, if we said something wrong in this episode or if we didn't do something the right way, please just, you know, let us know. Um, we are listening. We hear you. You know, if we mm-hmm. are not doing things the right way, I think Chloe, we talked about that in the episode with Chloe too. When people call you out on your stuff, you know, don't um, kind of try to make excuses or whatever it is. And I think, you know, Danielle and I are both working on that too. So we are trying to use our platform. You guys, we are trying and we might, we probably will stumble and make mistakes along the way. And that's just part of the journey. And you guys are on it with us. And I mean, that this is it. <laughs> Yeah, so we kind of said it before, but, you know, just a couple quick things that you can do, you know, if you are to use your white privilege or to just use whatever privilege you're working with here, educate, 
We have resources that we post on our Instagram story. We'll constantly be flooding you guys with different things. I mean, literally, you can just go on Instagram and see something for sure. You can donate. Brooke donated to the George Floyd Memorial Fund. I donated to Black Lives Matter. We're donating the proceeds for, to the Black Visions Collective. There are literally so many awesome organizations right now that you can support. And then vote. Register, register to, to vote. vote. Register to vote. It's coming up in November. But also, you know, I've been seeing everybody, you know, vote in your local elections and things like that, too, because that's where the voices get amplified. So lots of voting. Mm-hmm. Um, texting. I'll just plug these really quick. Text Floyd, F-L-O-Y-D, to 55156. These are how to sign petitions, by the way. Um, text Justice to 668-366. And just on change.org, there's a ton of petitions. So be sure to um, sign them all. Yeah, I I know this has been a crazy week. You guys, we go into anxiety too in the episode with Chloe. It's normal to feel anxiety during this time. And it's even, you know, I I feel like as a white person, I feel this immense just doom and anxiety. So I truly cannot imagine what people Mm -hmm. in the community are feeling. I will never be able to uh, truly forecast what that is. Just know that we we are here for you and we are allies and we are doing our best to amplify the voices as best as we can. Couldn't have said it better, Brooke. Anyways, let's get into this episode with Chloe. She dives deep into really a lot of important topics. Like we said before, you know, it's not going to cover everything in the whole entire world, but it's going to give you guys at least a star. I know a lot of people, we answer your questions at the end of the episode that we got on Instagram with Chloe about, you know, just simple things that maybe you are uncomfortable to ask. We're here to talk about it. We, we really just wanted to open the floor you know chloe said nothing's off the table and we were so thankful to her for that she's a youtuber instagrammer she's so freaking awesome we love her she's so well spoken and i just think you guys will really enjoy this episode yeah if you don't follow her already you're missing out so definitely do that um and enjoy the episode you guys um okay you guys we are so excited now to be joined with chloe thank you so much chloe for coming on the show today thank you for having me yeah, I'm so excited we're so to be excited. here. It's going to be a great conversation to be had. We're really looking forward to chatting. We're going to be talking to Chloe a lot about how we can be allies because I think that's a big thing that people are trying to figure out because it's becoming this newer territory for some people, which is not okay. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. But I think Brooke and I both want to just learn more about it and just kind of talk and have uncomfortable conversations. We talked about it in the intro, but it's totally okay to have these uncomfortable conversations once you say, Chloe. Yeah, it's it's the only way to learn and grow in any part of life, really, but specifically with this topic. Being uncomfortable just shows that you're kind of pushing the boundaries of what you thought was or what your reality was before you started the conversation Mm -hmm. and just exploring other people's perspectives and experiences. It's just such a good way to just grow as a person and uh, have more empathy for other people. Oh, I love that. So true. I really love that. I've been loving everything, Chloe, that you've been sharing. I see your tweets and everything specifically, Mm -hmm. but just on social media about everything that's going on. I think you are so well-spoken and everything is just so well said. And thank you. I really um, appreciate everything that you're doing. So I guess we want to start off besides just like, you know, starting to have these conversations and things like that. I want to talk more about like education, yeah. uh, the mm. concept of education in general, because everyone's saying, you know, that's the big thing right now. Educate yourself. And I, I know that I have room to grow in this area. I'm sure Danielle I too, we're trying to do. educate ourselves and, you know, these cute little Instagram graphics, it's not enough. No. Yeah. I think that we can agree on that. So I wanted to hear Chloe, your stance on education specifically as you know we are we're two white girls we're obviously you know not in the community and kind of doing better I guess with education what is your stance on that you know what are some resources maybe that you know of and how we can help well um I think first things first having conversations like these with your black friends or black colleagues or peers that's Mm -hmm. I think a good start um and you know watching documentaries and um, like 13th or something like when they see us, which is on Netflix, just looking at, I mean, there's so many resources Mm -hmm. and so many documentaries and books that people are talking about, like white fragility, like all of these books and, um, movies and docs, like that's, I feel like that's also a good place to start. And Mm -hmm. while having conversations with your, you know, with black people in your life are important. I do think that going out and doing research on your own, 
is like is the next step as well because as much as because I I also want to make it kind of known that like while I and so many other people appreciate having conversations like this it's really our own job as individuals to find the resources on our own if that makes sense Mm -hmm. because you know if you just rely on someone to just sit and educate you there's really not going to be much to gain from that because people are kind of tired, you know, and exhausted of being the ones who always have to teach and have to preach. Mm -hmm. And like, we don't want to do that, but I do understand obviously the need, the want to find these resources. So yeah. So 13th, when they see us, Oh my God, there's so many books. <laughs> I can't even there's think so of them all books. right now. Like if you, cause even on Instagram, like I saw you guys shared like book lists mm-hmm. and I shared book lists. So just go through those, buy the books, buy the audio books and just start there and then continue to have conversations. I think those are the kind of the two main points, you know? Totally. I think the biggest telling point for me has just been talking and it's something that I personally was never hundred percent comfortable to do and that's why even just us sitting and down and talking together is I think such a great step and I hopefully hopefully this inspires others to kind of sit down and chat because I love what you were saying about how you're just tired you don't want to have to educate we should have that desire to sit down and read about it to watch a documentary I think documentaries are a great opportunity because it's something they can watch and you can potentially you can never 100% know how someone's feeling but it'll kind of give some more insight and hopefully give people some more empathy and need and want for more help so I really love what you just said that makes complete sense thanks yeah I think I I definitely see um in like so many of my friends who are just first of all checking in on me which is just such a kind thing totally um Mm -hmm. but also saying not Well, yeah. Also saying that they just ordered a bunch of books or they are about to sit down and watch another documentary. Like I just, I'm, I'm really grateful for that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, yeah, it's a great step. And I'm, I'm happy that, you know, a silver lining out of all this could be that people are now pushed to learn more and grow more. Yeah. Um, so Let's just talk about really quickly, you know, your experience as a woman of color through, you know, education, work, YouTube. Is there Mm -hmm. anything that, you know, maybe trials, tribulations that you've gone through with that or anything specific? Yeah, I mean, before I even, you know, talk about that, I do want to briefly say that I don't want to like I'm not speaking on behalf of all black Mm -hmm. people. And there are just like the black experience is such a spectrum it really depends on where you're from, who, like, what community you're in, um, where, when you were born, where you were born. All, like, there's so many different, like, there's not just one Black experience. So I'm right. just mainly, you know, speaking from my own experience and my own perspective. But, um, yeah, so growing up, I grew up in an all, not all, <laughs> I don't want to say that. It was, um, I did, my town was diverse, but it was still a mostly white neighborhood. So there were a lot of instances, instances, Mm -hmm. sorry, of, you know, little microaggressions, which people, I don't think, um, I don't think it's completely understood what microaggressions are and what, you know, little, little moments of prejudice can look like because they're just such everyday things that people don't even notice them that much. So while I never truly experienced overt racism I did experience covert racism and like little moments of people saying things like uh you're not really black or you don't act black or you're you're an oreo um like you're black on the outside white on the inside and things like when I was in high school I was I had a lot of nicknames that weren't okay and at the time I didn't realize they weren't okay because you know, I had my own, my own um, issues with, you know, being insecure and wanting to make friends because I was like kind of socially awkward, you know? Um, So I had nicknames like um, little Tyra, Tyra Banks, because they used to call my older sister Tyra, uh, Black Betty, Baba Black Sheep. Um, Yeah, I know it sounds kind of crazy, but at the time, like granted people didn't say the, people didn't say these nicknames with ill intent. They just thought it was a funny thing to say. And at the time I was like, yeah, oh my God, so funny. 
because I didn't truly understand the weight behind it and how, and like where it was coming from and how it was kind of putting me in this other category, how like I had mostly white friends and, um, them calling me a nickname that wasn't like Chloe, you know, or Chloe money, you know, <laughs> it would be, um, Willow Smith. Oh you see, gosh. so it's little things like that. Um, well, they're actually not little things. I would say they're pretty big things, you know? <laughs> so, and then, so there's the nicknames and then there's the comments about me not acting like a stereotypical black person. So I must not be black. Um, and then, you know, also this didn't happen to me, but mm, there's, I was kind of unsure if I wanted to share this, but my, this didn't, again, this didn't happen to me. My dad, he is fine, like totally okay. But one day I remember, so my dad drives like a nice car, let's say, mm -hmm. let's just say, and he plays soccer on the weekends and on his way back from soccer, he's typically in all sweats. So one day he was bringing stuff back and forth from his car, from the, from his car, from the driveway into the house. And I remember seeing him and I saw a cop uh, pull over um, in front of my house and just sit there because it was pretty, it was pretty obvious that they, that they weren't sure if this was my dad's car and, and you know, and nothing happened, thank God. But, um, I remember looking and I was so scared and so like, so upset about, about that because obviously, you know, you know what happens in the world. You didn't know what was going to happen. Um, luckily he realized that it was his house and he drove away, but, um, things like that and things like, you know, family members being followed in a store. Mm. So yeah, while, uh, I personally, oh, and also my older sister, she's a doctor and like not, not long ago, you know, a very angry patient of hers called her the N word. So, um, while I haven't experienced like overt racism, it's definitely something that I'm pretty adjacent to in my life. Thank you so much for sharing that. I know that is so hard to share and it sounds like you were a little bit unsure, mm -hmm. but that, I really hope people are hearing this right now. That really hit me for sure. And just hearing it firsthand yeah. from you, I think really opens people's eyes. It opens my eyes even more. So, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's, yeah. Yeah. I definitely, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a lot because, um, again, there are people who have it so much worse totally. than how I have. And I do benefit from my own privilege as well, which I acknowledge. And I, it took me a while to even be able to acknowledge my own privilege, which is within the black community, there's colorism. So like I'm a light skinned black woman, so I benefit from that. Um, so while there's a good chance that had I been, you know, had darker skin, there could have been more overt racism towards me, you know? Yeah. And so I do recognize that. And I do recognize that I do have, you know, like economic privilege and privilege based on where I was born and which town I grew up in, but it doesn't make it any less difficult mm -hmm. or it doesn't, it doesn't remove the, the, um, difficulties that I've experienced, uh, in my life. But I, yeah. But I do acknowledge the privilege I have. So I think it's important for all of us to kind of like look inside and see what, how we benefit from either white privilege, uh, economic privilege, um, privilege of being, you know, lighter skin. And I think that's a good place to start is just acknowledging that and then learning from there. Definitely. And yeah, I think the privilege is a huge conversation. I really wanted to circle back, Chloe. Mm -hmm. What? Thank you so much for what you shared so far so impactful and I think it's also just very eye-opening for people to realize that this still very much exists it's mm -hmm. so easy for people to like sweep stuff under the rug and be like oh we we're progress we've progressed as a country clearly we have not mm -hmm. like these this is the proof um but I I know you mentioned microaggression and mm -hmm. micro racism and I want I want our audience to be clear of what this is and mm -hmm. that this is wrong and just kind of shed some more light on that I guess and I know yeah. you've mentioned the comments and passing and the nicknames which are absolutely unacceptable um but maybe how to call your friends out on it mm -hmm. in, a, in a way um 
because I think also people listen to this and I know I've done this in the past and tried to say, oh, well, I'm, I'm not racist, but have I allowed friends or people in my life to say things and me not stick up for what I know is right in my mm-hmm. heart? Of course. And I recognize that and I'm trying to be better. And I think this is like an area to do that. Would, would you agree? Kind of? Yes, I, I definitely agree. Uh, I think, uh, well, first of, first off, acknowledging like what there are different types of racism, right? There's the, mm-hmm. the things that we see on video of, of uh, black men and women getting beat up or murdered um, solely based on the color of their skin um, or people being called the N-word or, you know, just so blatantly, obviously racist things, right? There's that, but people don't realize. I, I know there's a graphic that's been going around the, the triangle graphic that shows like the deliberate racism mm-hmm. or not deliberate, but like the very obvious racism and then there are so many layers underneath that of like, like you said, the little comments that people make, the little prejudices people have. Um, so like, I do think first step is to acknowledge that um, that could be something that you're doing without realizing it or something that um, your friends are doing that they don't realize it or, you know what I mean? So yeah, um, it's like such a heavy topic. Totally. It's, yeah. Take all the time you need. Yeah. Um, so I think the first thing, well, I keep saying the first step, but I think an important step is, you know, if someone does call you out on it specifically, the, don't be defensive. Don't get defensive because I think no matter how much it might be uncomfortable or hurt if someone calls you out on something that could pretend, that could potentially make you feel like you're being called racist, just imagine the hurt that they're feeling based on what you said or did that could have caused their reaction. So I think, I don't know if, I don't know if I explained that correctly, but um, if someone says, Hey, what you said wasn't okay, or what you did wasn't okay. Just, I think it's important not to be defensive. I think it's important to ask why or engage in conversation and not just put it off and be like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not racist. I, I can't believe you would even imply that, you know? Yeah. Because that happens so often. Um, and that's happened to me too, where I'm having a conversation and someone says something that's, you know, not okay or based in prejudice. And I go, Hey, uh, by the way, what you just said just there isn't necessarily like, it's not okay. Don't say that again, please. Or like you hurt my feelings or something. Mm-hmm. And then I've had people just get, upset like I how could you call me racist well first of all I never called you racist you know um but I do think that if you just sit and think about how what you said made me feel then you can go from there and then you can learn to not say things like that again and by the things I'm talking about things like um things like what I said right so you don't act black you're you're not a black person. You're not, you're not that black. You're, you're pretty much white. And, um, I do want to kind of dive more into that specific phrase. Cause that's something that I, I think I've heard that one the most in my life and my friends and family have heard that the most in their life, in their lives. Um, and I think that the issue with that statement in particular is that when you imply that someone or try to compliment someone by saying that they're not acting black First of all, you're stereotyping black people and you're pigeonholing black people and telling them that there's only one way to be black. And if you're not acting that way, then you must not be. So there's that. And then you're also implying that acting black, quote unquote, is inherently a bad thing because, oh, wow, it must be so great or it's so great that you're not acting like this. You know, it's so great that you're acting more like me, you know. So I think that first understanding the meaning behind what you're saying even though you may not be ill intent intended intentioned you know what I mean (laughs) you may not have (laughs) ill intent saying something um maybe sit back and allow either allow someone to explain it to you or sit back and maybe do your research or do some thinking about why you said what you said or the meaning behind what you said and we, we cannot thank you enough for sharing like these deep personal stories. I can't, I truly, I, I know I can't imagine truly like the emotional, like what this takes. Yeah. It takes so... a toll. It really does. Um, and having empathy, I have empathy for people who don't realize what they're saying. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going around being like, Oh my God, screw everyone. Cause everyone's just so racist and mean and evil. Like, no, I understand that people just don't get it. 
they're ignorant and that's not being ignorant isn't a bad thing. It's just a signal that there's there's work to be done. But so, if you're intent if you're intentionally ignorant and you're okay with staying ignorant, then that's where the problem lies. Right. So for our you listeners know? and for Brooke and I and so you personally feel comfortable if, you know, when people say, "Okay, yeah, I'm not a racist." Cool. But mm-hmm. you can understand better and you want to understand better and you want to learn more. That's kind of where you feel comfort, would you say? Like that's what you're that's what people are wanting to hear more of and really feel. Uh yeah, I I definitely get, there's comfort in knowing that the people around me are willing to have the conversation. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And I, I like what you said about how people get defensive because I think every many white people have gotten defensive in the past you know when people call you out on stuff because it's like we said it's Mm -hmm. just an uncomfortable conversation which it shouldn't have to be but for some reason it's just become you know this taboo subject that Mm -hmm. we have to be so careful and tiptoe around and everything Mm -hmm. um when we need to be having these conversations so I really like what you said there Chloe about how you know don't get defensive and I needed to hear that honestly I needed to hear that call out on that yeah yeah it's um it's definitely hard I think for people but hearing that is just so good to hear instead of just being like, oh, I'm not racist. Just kind of be like, you're right. Like take ownership for it, hear them out and just have a desire to want to understand more. And that's something I personally am going to work on so much more. Holy crap. Yeah. So cool. That helps. Um, I did want to say um, also – in reference to how you guys could be allies and how you can, you know, work towards mm-hmm. um, kind of fixing what what we just spoke about, right? Yeah. Um, I think the first thing, it's really important to, again, acknowledge if you say something wrong or if you have any prejudices or even acknowledging the privilege you may have. Um But then on top of that, diversify your friend groups, diversify who you associate with, who you have conversations with, because, yeah, it's great to have conversations amongst your peers and your friends, like about racism and about politics even or anything like that. But you need to bring other people from other experiences into the conversation and really listen to them. I think listening is is a huge part of all of this Um, and not many people do enough listening uh, and they just assume what other people are going through instead of allowing them to speak their truth and to speak to their uh, experiences, you know? Yeah. And then um, when you're in, when you're with your family, I highly encourage people to call out your family members. If they're saying something that's not okay, you know, say it out of love. Like I love you, mom, dad, grandpa, grandma, but what you said is not okay. What you said can hurt someone or has, or potentially has hurt someone, you know, talk to them. Don't get angry. Don't, you know, you don't, the, people assume that having conversations like these will automatically lead to a fight. That doesn't need to be the case. Just come from a place of love and empathy and wanting to change and grow. And then I feel like that's just a good that'll lay the groundwork for a more productive and constructive conversation. Totally. How do you think is, you know, a good way to start the conversation with someone? Um, you know, what, what's like a good way to bring it up. So if some people don't feel uncomfortable, cause some people are more comfortable to talk about it. Others mm-hmm. aren't. What do you think is the best way to approach it? <sighs> I think, I mean, there are many ways and it also depends on who you're talking to, but Mm -hmm. it's always a good start, you know, if you're having, if you're just hanging out with your friends and something is said, that's not okay, then, I mean, that's, there you go, that's your opening to a conversation, like, hey, can we unpack what you just said? Can we, can we chat a little bit more about what you, I know you may not want to, I may want to, I may, I I feel like you might want to continue, um, Oh, I'm sorry. You may want to continue listening to music or partying or whatever that we're like doing already, but let's just pause for a second and talk about this just for 10 minutes because I think this needs to be said, this needs to be addressed so that you know for the future not to say what you just said or to do what you just did. That's uh, so that's a, that's a good start. Um, and then 
maybe even at the dinner table, like, hey guys, today, given what's going on in the world, can we just have a conversation about this? And Love then it. maybe go around the table and like talk about our feelings, you know? Yeah. It might sound super school. cheesy, yeah, but no. it's it's something. Um and yeah, I don't know if there's necessarily the there's not, there's never a perfect way to start a conversation like this, but but the the important thing is that that conversation happens. Love it. I like I like what you said, Chloe, there about like just calling it out right when it happens because mm-hmm. I feel like that's the best way of like tackling it and yeah, absolutely, you know, identifying that right away and hopefully you know people listening to this and just educating themselves more and understand what what when it is appropriate now to call your friends out and things mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. And then yeah. um, I did, I, I don't know if you guys, like, if you want to talk about this more, but because um, I did mention white privilege a couple times and I, yeah. and I assume that people who might be listening to this podcast might take offense to the phrase white privilege because I know people do. And I, I think it's because they don't truly understand what that means and how that, you know, is, is just inherently a part of your life and mm-hmm. is something that people benefit from. Because, yeah, uh, yeah, because I'd like to just explain that really quick, just in case someone's listening and is like, what do you mean white privilege, you know? Um, So I think I I think the best way someone explained it to or I've seen someone explain it is that white privilege doesn't mean that you haven't had a hard life or you haven't struggled. But it just means that the color of your skin is not the reason why you struggled. Mm. And that just means that the color of your skin didn't add to the struggles that you've experienced or the hardships that you've experienced. Because like I said before, I mentioned earlier about, you know, people being followed in the store because they look suspicious or people being pulled over just because they're driving in a neighborhood that doesn't look like they belong to it. Um, Or someone saying, you know, are you sure? Like, or someone questioning why you were accepted into a college or an institution Mm. because, you know, maybe it was affirmative action. Maybe you didn't actually deserve to be here, or maybe you were a diversity hire at this job, little things like that. People of uh, white people don't necessarily not necessarily, I'm sorry. They don't experience that uh, because of their skin color. People just assume that, Oh, they belong in this neighborhood or they assume that they're not going to, steal some stuff from CVS or they assume that, oh, they made it into this college on their own accord because when they see you, they don't see um, the potential for you to not really belong. I really like how you explained that. That that I think will clear it up for a lot of people because I think you're right. Some people do get offended when it's not supposed to be like that. It's just the struggles. I really like what you said about how the struggles that they are, have had doesn't have to do with their skin color. And I think that's something that people should really like remind themselves in them he- in their head. That's good. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I would love to dive into, we asked you guys on the gals on the go um, Instagram for, what you wanted to hear us talk about in this topic. And I really wanted to get some questions that might be uncomfortable and they might be a little um, awkward or whatever, you know, that people might feel um, are difficult conversations to have or whatever. So these are from you guys and we're just going to bring up some talking points with Chloe, if you're okay with that, Chloe. Totally fine. (laughs) Awesome. Um, I I really wanted to talk about this because I've been seeing this a lot on social media. Well, we'll start with actually just social media in general, because Mm -hmm. obviously everyone's posting these days. Everyone is doing in feed stories, these graphics about George Floyd and beyond and just how they are allies and things like that. And I wanted to hear from you, Chloe. Do you think that they're truly beneficial? Does it does it show you because I know you messaged me back to my story or something like, Mm -hmm. hey, thanks so much for posting this. And I honestly, Danielle and I just talked about this. We don't need thanks we we, we yeah, just there shouldn't the right... be praise we don't need praise um yeah. but we want to hear does it really help does it really have an impact you know um and w- what are your thoughts kind of on that I guess yeah well um I think I think it's <laughs> I feel like I've said this a lot so far but it's a good start <laughs> you know no, totally. um I think showing your support and doing a public act of, hey, I'm with you guys, I support you guys, I'm going to get the education I need to be able to support you more or to learn more about what's going on. I think that's 
there's nothing wrong with that. And I think it's great, but I think where it turns kind of useless is when that's the only thing that someone does. Cause some people I've noticed they post the Instagram story because, you know, they kind of are <laughs> bullied by society to do it. Like now's the time everyone, you know, mm -hmm post something to show you're in you're standing in solidarity with you know black people in this country and then that's all they do when when that's all they do and they kind of do it to check off a box it's like okay yeah. <laughs> that, that doesn't do anything totally but if you're but I do I do appreciate it because not everyone is even doing the bare minimum which is posting stuff on their Instagram stories or retweeting something on Twitter that's the bare minimum Mm -hmm. uh, but I do, I, again, I'm appreciative because I know the intent behind some people who are posting those things. And I know like you guys, for example, I know you posted those things, but you're going further than that. And you're going to, and you're using your platform to talk more about it with this podcast, um, and to donate money. Like I know you're doing more. So, uh, it's, it's a part of the equation, but it can't be the only part that people focus on or that people do. Um, okay, that's good. Yeah, so I think it's fine, but I think they, again, need to go a step further. You need to talk with your friends, talk with your family, mm -hmm. have conversations with people of color, with black people, with your um, – if, you know, call out things when you see them, call out prejudices, call out microaggressions, call out racism in your friend group – um, if you're singing a rap song and one of your friends decides to say the N-word because, oh, there's no black people around, like, I'm not going to offend anyone here. Like, no, don't say it at all. Call call your friends out. Um, and you, there's obviously there's more things that can be done. Go read a book. Watch a documentary. You know, there's so many things. Yeah. No, no, no. It's not even about the resources. I just mean just in general social media. Oh, yeah. I wanted to hear just your opinion on is it bandwagon, you know, and I think you oh, addressed it. Yeah. You know? Again, it definitely is. There's definitely a sense of it being a bandwagon thing, but there's – I don't think there's any harm in joining out of all the bandwagons to hop on. I feel like this is a good, a good one, you know? <laughs> Just yeah. go further. Another question a lot of people asked that we saw were, and I'm sure you've seen this on social media as well, myself included, you know, you're scared you're going to say the wrong thing. Because um, mm -hmm. I think it's like even just recording this episode, I find myself being very conscious of what I'm saying because it's it's important. So f to those people, to, the peop to myself, to people who are scared to post something or scared to talk about it because they don't want to say the wrong thing, like what do you have to say in regards to that? Um, I think if you, it's all about, okay, with the internet, there will always be trolls. There will always be people who mm -hmm. get mad at every little thing that you say and do. But I think if you go in it with a, with good intentions and you show that, you know, you're coming from a place of love and you're trying to, you're just trying to do better. You're trying to be better and responding to valid criticism if someone's, if you get an influx of negative messages on your, on your Instagram post saying, you know, oh, you shouldn't have said that. Like, don't, don't dismiss it as it being hate, you know, look at it. And if you, I think a good example of it, by the way, is, well, this might not be a good example, but I don't know if you guys know what happened with Hannah Brown recently. Yes. From The Bachelorette, she um, said the N-word on her live. And obviously that's different than saying than just like briefly saying the wrong thing. Like she straight up said something that she shouldn't have been saying. So obviously it's a, it's, it's a different level. But I did watch her live story that she did a couple days ago where yeah, she addressed everything. And she said that she's learning and growing. And she took the valid criticism. She told people, don't defend me because what I did was wrong. I think that was a good example of how you can grow when you do mess up. Just take that, don't get defensive, take the valid criticisms and then be honest and show like, and you can see through her Instagram story that like she was coming from a place of, I'm really trying my best here. I'm going to continue to try my best. And this is a journey that's not over for me. It's not like I just took a week off, you know, and I'm back and okay, it's all good. Like I'm going to continue to grow and to be a part of this um, revolution, I guess. Maybe revolution's an intense word, but you know, very just well said. Be, yeah, have have empathy, show some love, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Totally. 
I am. Um, I saw a lot of questions from everyone, truly, just about general anxieties during this time mm -hmm. um, from everyone. Um, including white people, which mm -hmm. I wanted, I know you did a video, you know, on like things to do to, what was the phrasing of it? it oh was yeah. Like, how to, like, like feel unplug. good. Um, feel good. I had like a feel good favorites video. Yeah. Which yeah. is so great. But besides, mm -hmm. you know, just the general things like self care and things like yeah. that, because obviously we, we don't need that right now. I just mean, is it normal to feel these feelings and I guess kind of how to cope? How to, I mean, yeah, I mean, self-care is important for everyone, mm -hmm. um, I think. But yeah, when it comes to feeling anxiety about the situation, I know I have 100%. I have been like more anxious this past week than I have in a very long time. Mm -hmm. And I think it's natural given the situation, especially, you know, if you're living in a city where there are riots, you know, I'm not far from Union Square and that's where like a lot of the riots yeah. are. But yeah, I think it's understandable white people, black people, everyone. It's an anxious time. And especially since, you know, the viral video of of George Floyd being murdered, like <laughs> that's anxiety inducing. That's, mm -hmm. I personally didn't watch the full video. I saw a couple clips, but I did not watch the full video because I know that for my mental health, it would be, it would really just, it would, I think I said this in a video, it would ruin me, right? Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's understandable. But take that anxiety and tr and maybe try to do something constructive with it. I saw someone on Twitter um, say, like, post a picture about how this, re again, with the term revol yeah, this revolution, right? There are different ways to go about it. If you're like someone like me who does get pretty anxious about things, maybe don't go to a march. Maybe don't go outside to protest because you know, you're feeling anxious about it, but instead go up, use your platform, talk, talk to people, you know, go on podcasts, like what I'm doing now, you know, post things, have conversations with your friends and family. Um, it, it, or if you don't get anxious, you know, go protest outside. Just be very careful when you do it, of course, to stay safe, you know, take necessary precautions, all that stuff. But um, back to what you're saying, the anxiety, I get it. And it's completely understandable. I like what you said because there was another a few questions of people asking you know for whatever reason they can't go protest what could they do and it sounds like you gave mm -hmm. the perfect answer use your platform or if you don't have a platform not everyone has you know thousands of Instagram followers to talk about mm -hmm. it but even I've seen some of my friends from high school friends in college like really starting the conversation and I some people that I never thought would ever talk about it are really coming out to talk and I think it is so cool especially when you really are coming from a genuine place and back to even though right now it's kind of a crazy time with coronavirus as well everyone's sitting at home this morning my family we were just drinking our coffee and we talked about it and it's just that is just one step closer to all of this so I think that is just a great example so thank you seriously <laughs> no problem yeah I also wanted to talk about because I think people what we kind of talked about posting the wrong thing mm -hmm. and I've seen a few people post the sentiment all lives matter versus <laughs> using the sentiment black lives matter and i i obviously we know that that is yeah. not what we should be using right yeah. now um and i, I don't I, mind I, explaining it okay. i don't mind explaining it <laughs> please um, <laughs> so <laughs> there are actually <sighs> the main issue with the phrase all lives matter is that first of all of course of course like no one's saying the the supporters of the black lives matter movement there no one is saying that all lives don't matter they're just saying mm -hmm. that at this time it's important to to really fight for black lives because black lives are you know being taken being taken take, taken advantage of being murdered on the streets you know so i think someone explained a really good example of how you can explain this is if there is, you're standing on a street and one house is on fire and you call the fire department, saying all lives matter is like saying, please hose down all of the houses because all of the houses matter. Yes, all of the houses matter, but one house right now is currently on fire and up in flames. So that needs to be addressed. And right now the black community is hurting. Black people are being killed because of the color of their skin. So that needs to be addressed. And yeah, I think that's 
probably the I most basic way that you can explain that. So I encourage people who are listening to this. And if you're going and talking to your friends um, and someone says, yeah, but all lives matter. Well, yeah, duh. But, you know, <laughs> use that analogy or I don't know if that's the analogy is the right word, but use that, you know, so. kind of. Yeah, Concept. analogy. Yeah, I think. Yeah, okay. I really had to think about <laughs> yeah, my elementary that. school. <laughs> <laughs> use that and like use that as an example. Another example is um, if you're at a breast cancer march, or sorry, or like a run for breast cancer. That's like someone coming in to coming in and saying all cancers matter. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, of course, no one's saying all cancers don't matter, but this is the run for breast cancer. Like we need to address the matter at hand. Like this is what's important right now in this moment where we're at. And that needs to be addressed. And until that's ad- and again, just to and to expand on that, all lives matter, or all lives can't matter until Black lives matter. And right now, what we're seeing clearly is that people aren't agreeing with the fact that Black lives matter because Black people are being murdered every week. Mm-hmm. Black people are getting are are having racist things um, said to them. Black people are getting beat up. Black people are being followed in the stores. Microaggressions are uh, microaggressions are happening to them on a day to day basis. So you know when things like this happen constantly, it doesn't really seem like Black Lives Matter. So and the fact that the phrase "All Lives Matter" stemmed as a response to Black Lives Matter, I feel like that's that in it of itself is reason to not say that phrase because it was clearly just a response to diminish what the black lives matter movement is trying to do Mm -hmm. it's a great way kind of just it's just kind of a way to like shut it up and that's what i've seen is like yeah that's like yeah yeah i'll leave it at that No, seriously, that makes, I think that's a great example of even just the breast cancer one. Like, because when you said it, it sounded so silly, but that's what people are doing with All Lives Matter versus Black Lives Matter. So I think Mm -hmm. that'll be a great thing for people to take home from this. Yeah, and completely and be more involved in everything. Um, Well, honestly, Chloe, I think that we covered a lot. Obviously, we are scratching the surface. Let's be real here. Of course. We're not not really diving at all, and we want to make it um, our we're promising to the gals in the go community that we are going to talk about this more and mm-hmm. it's i'm embar- i'm embarrassed truly that it took us this long to Seriously. do it and that the timing of the world has to be like this for us to speak up but it's just about time and i think it's you know so we are so incredibly thankful to have you here chloe and i'm grateful for to be here everything. i'm really i'm really honored that you guys uh, yeah. reached out and, and asked me to to join cuz you know it's it's something that's really important to me and the fact that I'm able to come here and talk to you guys, talk to you two and also talk to your audience is exactly. it's really great. And I hope, you know, the people who are listening, we're listening are kind of inspired to do what they can to go and support the, the movement, go and support black people, black influencers, black mm-hmm. um, businesses, black companies and really donate and donate to the cause. Right donate to funds, donate mm-hmm. to, like, there are so many, like, if you just go on Instagram for five seconds, you'll see so many, right? Um, oh, yeah. But I hope that this inspires people to stand up for what's right, to use their platforms, and to educate themselves, because only good can come from educating yourself and from having the important and difficult conversations. So plug yourself. Where can people find you so they can follow you along? So I'm sure you're going to be posting some great stuff in the next <laughs> few weeks as well. Yeah. Well, I have um, – I think my main thing is my YouTube. I oh, yeah. just finished um, Every Day May, which was a video every single day so for cool. the entire month of May. So it was 31 videos, and I'm exhausted, wow. but <laughs> I did it. Uh, thank you. Uh, so my YouTube channel is my name, Chloe Coriolan, uh, and then I have an Instagram and the Twitter, if anyone wants to go hang out with me there. But other than that, I'm just hanging out, you know? Awesome. <laughs> That's well, where people can find me. <laughs> we'll have all of her info in the show notes, you guys. Chloe, thank you so much again. This was so important to have. And I know we all can take something out of this. So, yay. 100%. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Of course. Right, thank you. Good. <laughs>